The mangrove swamps are an essential barrier between the land and the sea. They protect the land from erosion, which would cloud the waters of the coral reefs, killing the corals and with them all the animals that live there. And the rich, complex system of mangrove roots also provides food and shelter for animals and humans. The Bajau know many different fishing methods, but perhaps the most curious one of all is this one, fishing with kites. The technique they use is simple, but very effective. It consists of attaching a hook to the kite, which is made from fern leaves, and with the help of a pole, the fisherman can move the hook as far out as he wants. The swaying of the kite keeps the bait in constant movement, attracting above all the flying fish. This fisherman is called Jared, and until eight years ago he lived in Aleppo. Like many other Bajaos, Jared decided to join a government settlement and education plan. Now he lives with his wife and four children in this village of stilt houses called Torosiyaji. The government tried to house the first families along the coast, but they were unable to adapt to dry land and soon returned to their boats. Then the Bajau suggested building the village over the sea, and so Toro Siyaji was born. Today it is a prosperous, well-organized community of 300 families who have electricity, a small clinic, a school and a mosque, and every year new buildings are added to this floating city. Though the greatest number of Bajaos live in Sulawesi, there are also groups of them in Myanmar, where they are called Mokan, or the people drowned by the sea. In Thailand, they are known as the Chao Nam, or water people, and they can also be found along the coasts of the Philippines and Vietnam. Despite this diaspora and the enormous distances separating them, they have in common the same maritime culture, characterized by their profound knowledge of the seas. The mosque and the school are the only buildings in Torosiyaji standing on dry land. Well, not exactly dry land, because they have been built on foundations made of coral. Hi. Though the government's main aim is that they should settle and the children should go to school, it respects those who have decided to preserve their traditional way of life and every day a number of canoes sail out to the lepers to take the children of the nomads to the school. At low tide, the shellfish can be easily gathered. This is the time of greatest activity. Observing the seaweed, they know what day of the month it is. This is their natural calendar, which never fails. When the seaweed opens up to release the seeds, it is the third day of the month. Between the 10th and the 15th, they again open. From the 16th to the 20th, they remain closed. And from the 20th to the end of the month, their color becomes more intense. At midday, the waters are very shallow. 
And this is when the Bajau comb the sea bottom in search of food. Their basic diet is fish and rice. The rice they buy in the markets on the coast, where once a week the women go to sell the fish they have caught and buy basic necessities such as fresh water. The most highly valued seafood is the trepang, a kind of cucumber especially sought after in China due to its curative powers and which represents their greatest income and these giant oysters which they conserve by smoking. <laughs> 